Thank you. I will need to change a lot of the slides that are included because a lot has been said and I apologize to the interpreters. I will add aspects that are not on the slides, but I will speak slowly and be on time as much as I can. Just to check, 15 minutes? Wonderful. So um, let me start with the easy part. This is a measure of opportunity. It's the reason why we're here. It is not how many children die, it is how many deaths can be averted. And you see them in order of opportunity, with Chad leading, followed by Somalia, South Sudan, and Guinea, which is why this workshop is so essential. A quick snapshot of what Gavi's support has achieved as the Alliance came together. 63 introductions supported, hundreds of millions of children vaccinated, more than 300 million children since 2009. The number I love most, between 140,000 to 190,000 deaths averted per year. And as of 2025, that number can include the deaths averted for the countries here today. UNICEF already talked about PCV manufacturers. I think WHO showed you which countries are using what, and you can have more of this information offline if needed to reassure you. The key message is you have many options, and that is great. And those options can be adjusted after introducing. What does Gavi support? We support introduction in routine for PCV, and we support catch-up at introduction for PCV. We support the full three-dose schedule for routine, and we support one dose for children in four age cohorts between 12 months and 59 months for the catch-up. So it's three doses every year and one dose for four cohorts of children in a catch-up campaign at launch. And we give money to support implementation costs. Typically, that should cover the majority of the implementation cost. If not, we hope other partners can co-subside. You'll see how much that is in a moment. We also support technical assistance. I had written the requirement in the application if the country only wants to introduce in routine, does not want to introduce catch-up, it is important to explain why. But today I know that Somalia is planning catch-up, Chad is planning catch-up, Guinea is planning catch-up, and South Sudan confirmed yesterday that NITAG will assess catch-up as well. So I'm reassured that it is on the table because that's a quick win to boost protection. This is a very ugly slide. <laughs> it is the corresponding to what UNICEF showed in terms of vaccine options. What is not on the slide, so please don't look there, hear the voice. The, the cost is not this much for the majority of the countries today. This does not apply. It is not $1, it is not $2, it is not $3. It is cents. For Somalia, for South Sudan, for Chad, they are in initial self-financing. So the share of the cost, the price is fixed. Zero, two per dose. So the full schedule for rotavirus will cost 40 cents regardless of whether it's two or three doses, 0 0.4 dollars plus wastage. 
the full cost for PCV, so I'm going back and forth, will be three times 0 0.2. So it's 60 cents per schedule plus wastage to go to the fully vaccinated child. It's a lot less. For two countries here today, those are Somalia and South Sudan. In the current year, the circumstances allow to be eligible for a waiver to be requested when submitting the application, meaning the cost to the country, and I'm looking for Dr. Betty here, would be zero. Not always, not forever, but at introduction, if the circumstances remain fragile, the cost will be fully paid by Gavi. And if not zero, it is a fraction of 60 cents for PCV, and it is a fraction of 40 cents for Rhoda. And I'm saying a fraction because you'd only pay for 10% of the children, if at all. So yes, we hear and we heard that co-financing is one of the challenges, but it is not the main barrier. There are so many other bigger barriers that we're here to try and solve together. Rotavirus, similar picture, impact a little less than PCV, where we know it's much bigger from the vaccine perspective, but it's still huge. Tens of thousands of children saved, deaths averted, the epidemiologist would you know, pardon me for using different terminology, every year. The impact of these vaccines is just astounding. The good news, so many options. And yes, UNICEF today only, proc only procures five. Let's reflect. Four years ago, five years ago, there was a good and a bad option. An expensive, bulky, three-dose schedule option compared to a cheaper two-dose schedule compact option, which is now frequently in supply shortage. Today, in theory, the menu of Gavi has 12 options. UNICEF is buying five of them. They're available with planning. That's incredible. All the new options have been developed for Gavi-supported countries to reduce cost to increase supply. So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the effort that it went into creating more options. And this is important because there are two key questions. To introduce or not to introduce. But that's not the end. After introduction, then the question is, how can we optimize? Can we pick a better option that has become available? Because the investment is continuing to generate new pre-qualified options. And soon, I'm looking at Africa CDC here, in a few years, you will have locally manufactured options as well. So I think this is the beauty of opportunity to improve and re-gear the program in future. Today we're here for introduction. This is Gavi support for introduction. Two or three doses in children in the first years of age and exceptional waivers possible. And the vaccine introduction grant, which is the same for PCV, is mostly 080 dollars in the countries in this group here today per surviving infant, not per targeted infant, per surviving infant in the year of introduction. This money is additional to the pneumococcal money. It's additional to the pneumococcal catch-up money. So it's three different grants that are available to support hopefully a synergized implementation. These are the options for rotavirus. You've seen the similar slide presented by Laura earlier from WHO. I would just focus on 
supply availability as one of the aspects where it's important to reach out to UNICEF and to signal early which of the two options, even if not available, pick preference of two options. Which is number one, regardless of availability? Which is number two? And after submission, we can get back to you with the submission target numbers and launch date, matching that with supply availability to see can we give you your preference number one or introduce with preference number two and switch later. I thought that coming here today, I needed to make a strong case for launching both PCV and RODA. So this is reaffirming GAPT, this is reaffirming why the combination is convenient. But I heard from every country in the room that all of you are planning to introduce both, which is splendid, because submitting to Gavi is so much effort for everyone. And why do it twice? Submit one full package, reduce the cost of the transaction, maximize the impact. This is just a sort of a back of the envelope reminder of what is similar between the two programs. It is the same target population at the same time. One is injectable, the other one isn't. So there's some preference there for giving them together. The number of doses is similar, matching at the same time. The schedule, you can adopt the same schedule. The presentations, as soon as available later on, there could also be similarity in presentation to not confuse healthcare workers. It's just something I'm putting out there for optimization. A lot of complementarity for these two vaccines to be introduced together. There are three grants, I'm just reaffirming. In the budget request, you will need to reflect these three grants separately because the ceilings are separate. And let me just say, please, if the grant is 2 million, asking for 10 million is complicated for us. We will not be able to increase the ceiling. So consider that if the grant is 2 million, 2 million, and 2 million, you have six total. Let's try to be within that ceiling, plus whatever other partners can fund. And le let's look at the synergies. If there is a measles rubella campaign, and if there is a PCV catch-up campaign that happen within four months of each other, our independent review committee will ask, why do them separately? Why not do them together? Do the training together? Do the transportation together? Because I've seen a budget with a $2 million only for transportation. It's difficult then for us to justify that. Now, on the combined introduction, there are 10 countries that introduce both together. And the post-introduction evaluation somebody asked earlier today shows that the only challenge that was different from introducing separate was cold chain, because cold chain requirements were obviously bigger than introducing only one. But there is no programmatic disadvantage that is significant for doing both together. We also see that there are about 11 Gavi countries that have introduced pneumococcal vaccination, have not introduced rotavirus vaccination. And now the difference in time, it's eight years. We don't know if and whether they will do it, which is why I thank you for doing both. Quick check on data, just very preliminary analysis of WINIC, just reconfirming for the 10 countries that introduced together, uptake matches both. For the 30 countries that introduced PCV first, you see how the RODA coverage obviously is not as, as high 
and for the countries that introduced rotavirus first, we see a very fast uptake. But the message is introducing them together really maximizes the opportunity. You see here in numbers, just modeled numbers, the lion's share of deaths averted is led by pneumonia, by pneumonia vaccination and pneumococcal vaccination. Rotavirus adds on top. And it's important to try and do both at the same time. This is just a recap for the support for all three. I've said the same already. To remember the catch-up cost in terms of vaccines is zero. So if you are Somalia or Sudan, very likely the cost of introducing, vaccine cost of introducing will be zero for the first year if you introduce in the next couple of years in the current circumstances. And it will be quite low for the following years. Catch up is a big effort, but it does not cost money, if not on top of the grant that we give. Recommended steps. Number one, NITAG recommendation, which is why the session we had earlier today was so, so, so critical. Nothing can happen without NITAG experts assessing what of these options are best for the country and when. Combining the introduction, doing the catch-up at introduction, when to do it, with what vaccine, the questions that Laura from WHO showed earlier today. Then there is the application. Important step, the last box. Before submitting to Gavi, submit a draft to me. I have reviewed Somalia's application three times. I must admit, you've developed so fast I could barely keep up because we've seen a draft at the end of July, an update in the middle of August, another update at the end of August, which is extraordinarily fast. But hopefully you've seen the change in the quality of the application to save time later. Because when it goes to the formal, independent, ex external review, not within the Gavi Secretariat, then it becomes more formal and more long. So any draft you have, send to Gavi, we'll coordinate with partners to make sure the application can be solid. I think this is one on my last slides. These are the requirements for the application. We do not request separate introduction plans. As much as you can, simplify. We don't need a long application. We just need it to be complete. The plan, the budget, the NITAG recommendation. And then a measure to know for the campaign, how do we know the readiness assessment and a post-campaign survey. I have a couple more points just to make sure we're all clear on catch-up. I think there's a difference between catch-up at introduction and catching up after introduction. Catch-up at introduction is very new. Gavi only has been supporting it for a few years. Timor-Leste is the only country that has implemented it. They did a massive operation with three antigens in the campaign and then routine introduction later. Tajikistan has applied, has been approved, and they didn't have the capacity to do the catch-up at introduction. So we discussed and we made an exception to do the catch-up within a year from introducing, which is complicated. But what we're observing today is Tajikistan introduced in November last year. We still don't know when they're going to do the catch-up. So, better to plan for the catch-up to happen before introduction or at introduction. I know some of the countries don't have this plan, but highly recommend it to do it earlier, because otherwise even record-keeping becomes very complicated. Thank you.